Well, hello, Man Cavers. You join me back at Man Cave HQ. Yesterday, you see us get the old engine off. Well, here is said engine, which is going to go on the Bonza truck. Believe me, it was like lifting a damned Atlas stone to get this from the floor up to there. Anyhow, today we are going to have a go clean this thing up. Remove this, see if we can get this rope pull off, and we'll go from there. Roll the credits. Ah. Welcome to the man cave. Let the games begin. Well, man cavers, here we go. This is a Cola K series. I love these engines. I won't really have a bad word said about them. I've worked on dozens and dozens of these and I've actually owned various machines with about six of these on over the years and I've never once had one that smokes or had one that didn't run right. I did have one that had a little bit of a rattly tap at once, but that was about it. So these engines, they weigh an absolute ton. These are so, so, so much more heavy duty than Briggs and Stratton, Tecumesh, Kawasaki. These are full cast iron blocks and they weigh a ton, but it also makes them extremely durable. Very much so. So... I have no doubt in my mind this one turns over. It has compression, but every cola I've known has compression. And yeah, I'm pretty sure this is once we've cleaned the carb and cleaned all that starter motor, I'm pretty sure this will just fire up instantly and run beautifully. Well, let's give her a blow off. And then we can really be getting to this. Oh, dear me. Right, pop it and joke, look at all that. Crap everywhere, guys. Oh. Yep, 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 yep. This definitely hasn't been run for years. But you know me, that's just how I like to get them. I hate buying engines that are running because it's just no fun. Right. I think... Oh, look at all this crap around this side. Cobwebs and everything, look. There we go. What the hell? That's nice this has got the alternator on as well. I can see that because we've got the wires coming out of there. So we've got the facility where she'll charge your battery but normally when they have electric start they always come with that anyhow i think to be belt and braces i'm just going to give it a bit of lube on the bits i need to undo on the cables on the joints give everything a bit of a lube so when we want to get to undo it, we can. There we go. So I'm going to start, I think, I want to get this tin work off, but we've got to get this. So I don't need this pull start on here anyhow, so I'm going to try and get that off. These screws can sometimes, oh, can sometimes be a bit of a nightmare. That one I was actually partly loose already oh there you go he's a long one uh, come on because uh, uh, I don't bring off on me well it don't really matter because I'm not putting none of these back in cool That one's coming and all up. They're all coming off, guys. Look at that. Ah, 
Ah, brilliant. That does come off. Excellent. Well, do you know, I think we can probably fit this grill back on then. If I leave these spacers out and get some shorter screws. Oh, that, oh of course, that's going to hit that cowling look. Unless that'll go behind that. We'll see if that'll go on under that cowling. There we go. Well, that's got... That's got some of it off. Of course, you got good compression. All right. Let's get the rest of this tin work off. Simply because... And the only reason I'm taking that off is so I can blow all the cobwebs and spiders and any other bits can just be blown straight off so let's tell you what i'm going to open the socket set and use the correct AF sockets instead of cheating and trying to use metric now where are my IF sockets? Is this an IF socket? That is, and I always think that's probably that size. It is this size, look, here we go. I've never normally had troubles with these not undoing. And I don't expect this one to be any exception. Because I say these engines are so well made that things don't normally ring off on them. There we go. There we go. So that's them two out. Excellent. There should be some more underneath here. There they are. Oh, that's that one slackened. Oh, this thing weighs a ton. Oh, this one's a bit of a nightmare by the look of it. There you go. Rusted solid. But just undoing like it's nothing. Mm, isn't that good? So let's rattle these out. Whoops, I'm going the wrong way. There we go. There we are. This should now come off. Oh my god! Look at the state of that in there. So if you're ever wondering why I do take these engines and take the covers off them, this is a prime example of why. I see Fluffy has been busy in here, look. Look, Fluffy nests, look. Yeah, imagine all that making your engine overheat. So I think that means we've got to take this top tin off as well. No, well, that probably blow through there, actually. Well, there we go. See if that'll blow through from this way. Save taking that top tin out of the way, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Come on. What the hell? Look, 
too bad. Not too sooty, not too crappy. There's a little tiny nut there. That looks like a little quarter to me. Is that a quarter? No. That's slightly bigger. Well, let's come up the size to this one then. Mm. There you go. Eight millimetre. And again, just undo look. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Oh, look at fluffy next in there. Let's get all this. Oh, look at all that. There we go. Well, that's got, that's got the fluffy nest totally off. In here, I believe, is clean. Shall we just pop this one off for good luck as well, for the sake of three more bolts? I think so. I think for the sake of three bolts, we'll take this one off as well. I do love these engines, I keep saying it, but they're heavy, but they've got a lovely note to them, they run nice and slow. So much power to them, they have a tremendous amount of torque. So yeah, I have no doubt in my mind that this thing... It's going to be sweet as a nut. No, that's the wrong size as well, Finn. Ah, it's this size. Once I drop my ratchet, there we go. We might as well go belt and braces, mightn't we? If not, I just know some of you are going to say, you should have took that one off. That's where all your mess is in there. And you'll whinge and moan. <laughs> I've done this all wrong. So we'll just pop these tins off and blow all these cooling fins out. Oh, I did need to come off, look. Look at all that round here. Look at that round there, look. Look at that. Look at all that. What the hell? Turn that compressor off. Ah, oh, there we go. There you go, that's cleaned all them off. So now, I'll get a paintbrush and go around them. But now, these ones here... These tins here now... I'm going to put straight back on so they don't get lost. There we go. Let me put these tins on and we'll be back. Alright, our top tins and side tins are back on. <sighs> Do we put this back on and then see if this shroud will go over it well in order to do that i'm gonna have to find some bolts what will fit in there all right i do not have any bolts to go in there where is this stick coming from out of here so i think we're gonna leave that off to be honest with you it isn't gonna get in our way any any what because come on yeah it's not going to really get in our way at all so come on 
I'll get back under there, you swine. This is why you have your adjustment on the top of these tins, so you can adjust them so everything slips back in. And I think for now, now we're going to have to slacken them top ones off to get this one realigned. go guys we're there where are them other ones I took out of there there they are oops I think we took the really short ones out of there didn't we not that it really matters they'll all fit in each hole hmm Just going to lube them holes up a little. two back in the top yeah. now we are going to spray this engine they ain't going to go back on the bonza in this sort of state but we'll actually get the engine running first and then when that's all complete we can just mask the exhaust and the carb up Spray the whole thing. That way you're not putting it together and you've then got sort of, you know, broken paint or odd coloured bolts, whatever. This is how they were built from factory. They were built and then they were sprayed once they were built. So we're just going to do it the same as the factory did it. There we go. Right. This thing weighs a ton. I bet this throttle is... Oh, that's heavy. Let's see if this throttle cable <laughs> still works. I think it probably do. Well, look at that. It even self returns, look. Yep. That throttle cable is even free. Right. Get this bit of pipe off here. That's a definite. Pwah. Pwah. This shed stinks of old junky fuel it really does reek in here all right let's get these pipes off i don't want to there's an aluminium nipple on this carb and the last thing you want to do is give that too much stick because they do break and if you break that nipple off that carb You're in a little bit of hurt. So don't just go pull your fuel line off. 
There we go, that's got it off. As I say, these nipples here, they do break. Right, we need to get this carburetor off. Let's see if we can get the air filter off. See what that's like in there. And once we're done this, there should be two screws, which then take the air filter plate off the back of the carb. There we go. There you go. There's two screws in there. Oh, I love how cool this come a bit. There we go. So we'll keep all of that intact. Of course, that's all clean. That can go straight back on once we've done the carb. Let me set him down there. There we go. All right, let's get this carburetor off. Hmm. Everything's looking good in there. these there we go 11 mil will do it of course this carb should have the old style brass flute in it which like like I say again are normally pretty damn good you don't normally get too much problems. But this has got stinky fuel. I mean, I smelt it as I was taking it off the mole. When I took the petrol pipe off, I smelt stale fuel in there. And I mean stale. I don't mean a little bit stale. I mean extremely stale. Come on, Carb. There you go. And we've saved the gasket as well, look. All right, let's unhook this out of this end hole. Our gasket, look at that, that gasket still looks absolutely perfect, so that can stay well alone. I think while we're here, we can be... giving her a bit of a clean up, guys. Just clean the old engine up a bit. There we go. Just give her a little tinkle up. It's pretty clean, actually, this engine. I've seen them a lot worse than this. This one's actually... This one's actually quite good. Where the devil that spider come from? I've just had all these damn covers off here. And still some... Ah, uh, he's on... Where'd he go? I think he's gone on the floor somewhere. Yay! Oh, there he go, under the freak. I've just had all them tins off and a spider come out of there. You wouldn't believe it, would you? Hmm. Just having a drink of a cold snack yep right I think we can be I'm not going to lift that damn engine off there to do this carburetor I'm afraid I'm not doing it I am not doing it I will just pop these bolts in the bottom cover again look because I've forgotten to put them in. There we go. Before I forget, we'll just get these bolts back in this side cover. Look, I left them out. Have a side in. There 
There we go, that's it. Right, let's move this engine over a bit. We will get a clean cloth. That's our carburetor bolts. If you notice, I'm doing all this before I've even checked for a spark. But I am that confident that this thing is going to have a spark. I am that confident of it. Right. Here we have our carb here. Can you see what I'm doing here? You certainly can. Right. There we go. As long as that ain't all rusty and cruddy in here, where it's had water, that should be... There we go. Well, look at that. That carb is bone dry in there. Just a little tray. Yeah, sticky like sedimenty oil. Minging. So, yeah. Absolutely bone dry in there. So, out comes the... Out comes our drill brush to clean in here. There we are. Look at that, that's cleaned him up, look. You have to be a bit careful, you don't give this nipple too much stuff, because that's a drain, and there's a little rubber washer on there, and they can deteriorate in leaking time, and then they'll drip, so try not to disturb them. Let's give our carb a little go on over here. Get this float out. There we go. There's the float. Is the needle coming out or is that? Oh, the needle's coming out as well. There we go. He's out. There's a bit of crud around there. Again, we want to try and save this rubber gasket because I don't want to have to get an O-ring kit. So I'm just going to gently go around that gasket because we've got to reuse that. And then in here, get your little wire brush and just go in the top of this carb and get all that sediment out there. There we go. That's cleaned that up a tree, isn't it? There should be a little jet way down in there. So we've got to see if we can get that out. Where is that little screwdriver I use for carb jets? Tell you what. I don't like taking brass jets out of alloy bodies. So we're going to just clean this one in situ. We'll just, because they don't normally plug too much. No, I'm going right through it already, look. So as a rule, yeah, we're going right through that, look. There you go. We've given her a little file through. A little blast. Make sure that's coming through. There you go. Give that a little bit of air. Oh, yeah. There we go. So these carbs are normally... Carbs are normally very, very good. Now, with this little, this manky old horrible rubber, that horrible rubber gasket we've got around the bottom there, 
this is a little bit of a cheat and do not overdo it but if you just get a tiny little bit of grease not enough where it's going to get all in the carb and start blocking everything up just a little tiny smear around that rubber trust me it'll make the world of difference and stop that leaking if not you are got to pick that out of there and that'll be brittle and hard and horrible and then you're gonna to have to send away and it's another week it's another week before you can put your engine back together and you know mankind's motto we like to repair what's there this isn't a it will run video because we're throwing a load of new bits at it this is a can we get it running with what's there so check our float actually moves that doesn't so that little needle there that is not dropping on its own in gravity So we're going to have to do a little bit more cleaning in there. Just to get that right. So we'll put a little bit of lube in there. little bit of brake cleaner also we'll give this a little clean just rub it in your fingers just to get any tarnish or crap off this little needle there we go and I wouldn't mind betting now oh yeah it falls out that's fine so that is now going to open and close. We will just check it. That isn't. Come on. Because that seems to be moving quite freely. That's getting a little bit stuck in the bottom. Don't want to give this too much stick because you don't want to damage that seat. There we go. Just give that a little bit. Give that a little bit. Ah, there you go. See that? That's now, there you go, that is now dropping in and out. Yeah.
that's perfect so that is working an absolute treat now we want to just clean this little needle up this is your mixture adjustment on the bottom here that little screw what actually comes out of there so it wouldn't hurt to take this out and just give this a little clean with your small brass brush don't overdo it because you don't want to damage that tip on there just give her a little clean with your brush there we go get him back in I didn't count them because you've got to go all the way in and then out too as a rough guy, go out one and a half, two, you'll be absolutely fine. Then you can adjust it when that's running. Half, one, one and a half, there you go. We'll go one and a half. And we can be pretty sure that's going to be right. So let's get our carb bowl. Wherever I'll put that. And we'll get that carb bowl there back on. That's all clean in there. We'll give up a little clean around the seal where that little o ring goes. We'll clean the whole bowl up a bit actually. Just to get any corrosion or the worst off. There we go. There we go. Now just put these back on with a slight twist to get them seated. Put this in and then you'll find out your fate once you get fuel in here. If you have escaped having to buy another O-ring because that one was exceptionally hard. All right, let's get this back on the engine. And then I think we can perhaps Check the oil on her, which I'm sure is fine because it's a cooler. <laughs> I keep saying that, don't I? You watch this don't run. It'll be a total bag of nails. There we go. Now, so we can get this um up here, look we can get all this back together get a fuel supply to this engine oh no we want to check the starter motor don't we i think we need to give the old starter motor bendix a bit of a lube up just turn them a little before we go jamming a battery on here i keep forgetting that's electric start isn't it and we need to do a little bit of wiring because i've actually pulled the entire wiring loom yeah, I'll pull the entire wiring loom off that old Atco groundsman mower. So we've got solenoid voltage regulator. The whole lot. Oh, I mean the whole lot. But that is all attached to an ignition switch on the fuel tank. So that could take as long to do that, or if not longer, as what it have to do this bit because I'm pretty sure now with fuel this engine will run and I haven't even checked for a spark because I'm convinced it's going to have one there we go right there is our carb back on kiss Choke on, choke off, choke on, choke off. That is marvellous. Right. Are we going to spin this back round now? And get to the start of it. There we go. Oh crap, you know what? Before we put this cover back on, 
we should have squirted that Bendix, shouldn't we? Yeah, we should have squirted that Bendix. Right. Did I tighten that other side up? No, I didn't. see if oh yeah we can get in that bendix with some we can get in this starter bendix now with some lube there we go that's got all that starter bendix now lubed up I think we can be getting our electro digitals in here now and the fuel tank so I'm going to slide this engine over as far as I can because I do not want to lift it back on the floor again and we'll get our electricals on here and we'll see what they're all about all right here in our fuel tank and our electricals there we go this may look daunting it's very simple this is a voltage regulator that's your solenoid for your starter motor positive cable for the battery so this cable here will go on to this to the battery and this other cable what i just had no it isn't that's this one this one goes on to your starter motor and you just connect them up to a battery, push this button and that should start and this should be, I'm assuming your ignition because this is all ATCO so I'm unfamiliar with all this but I know this is a voltage regulator that converts the AC to DC so remember the red wire in the middle doesn't matter about the two outer ones we just need to remember to put the red one in the middle just clean these connections up there we go give these a clean give a clean in here put them back on there we go that's them connections clean are these all tight well that one's not look that one have been very good and I haven't loosened that this one is loose that one's good that earth is good we do need to tighten this one back up. That we do. That's the bit off the carb. Sorry, this is a bit long-winded. Yeah, I love a bit of a little bit of electrical cleaner. Oh, that's tightening up. Look, 
we'll just do this one. Well, they were both a tad loose. These are now tight. Excellent. So what's this connection we have got on the end there? We can connect that. Connect the terminal on our starter post. He can go back on there. Washer. No. Right. We're just making sure she's gone tight. Which it is. Yeah. Don't over tighten them nuts. So now all these are tight. I don't know quite what I've done with this switch here. I assume one of these is on and which is off. This I'm assuming is going to be a starter button. <laughs> right, I think one of these wires here. One of these got a come to the voltage regulator of the engine. So if we spin our engine round, this should be one of these should have. Uh, I don't know which colour one come off there. Neither of them. It's going to be this one. Hang on. What happened here? We have a spade on there, which looks like that was blanked. Hang on. Voltage regulator. All oh, right. No, we want one of these yellow ones on there. That'll be your outlet. There we go. Uh, spin that round. Oh, these battery cables are some stiff. Right. I can put that up there. I can now sit a battery on here and we'll get some battery leads connected. Ah! So here we go, I have got my best dead battery, <laughs> my best dead battery, that's brilliant isn't it, we will see, we will see how this all goes, so we need to earth our engine, um, and earth our solenoid, and we should be good to go, right, Obviously, well, Earth are actually on the machine for now. Just to do an engine Earth and a test, I'm going to pop one of these bolts out and just Earth her on the top of the engine. If the bolts will go through this eye. engine so we want an earth onto our battery 
There we go. So we'll do a professional install. Perfect. Let's tighten that battery clamp up. Now we can put this battery clamp. Just touch it on. It don't appear that we have any sparks or problems. Tighten that one up. And let's see if this engine will crank. Ah, I ain't going to because I haven't earthed out this battery clamp, have I? So let me get a lead out. I've got some nice little leads I'll use just to do some earthing. There we go, we've got a little earth here. So we'll come earth on there and get the other end of our lead and we'll put that on the body of the solenoid and now let's see look at that she fires our flywheel is catching on this shroud So we will just pull that away from there a little. Try it again. Perfect look. So our electrical system is working. What's happening here? Has my earth gone bad? <laughs> oh, she's cranking over there nicely. <clears throat> that is most excellent. So I think we should connect a fuel system up to this thing, get this spark plug back in, if I can find the damn spark plug what come out of it. Mm, where's that spark plug gone I took out? Mm, I've got too much on my little tiny bit of workspace. I think this is the one. We'll just get our old plug a clean up. <laughs> Now I'm not going to use that Atco tank because it stinks. So what I am going to do is use my separate tank and put an independent supply to it. You know the score. You've seen me use that other little tank dozens of times. No, I haven't even checked if this has got a spark yet because I'm that confident of it. Then I ain't going to. Oh, I'm not going to tell. I don't want the exhaust face in the wall. No, I don't want the exhaust face in the wall. So we're going to come into it from the back here. It isn't a problem though. So let's get our fuel tank on. We're on. We have choke on. We just need to get some petrol in here. Hold him up. Hold him up in the air somehow. And then we'll see if it goes. There we go. So we've got some petrol in there. Now we need to hold this up in the air somehow. So gravity can do its thing. Oh no, I'll wedge it up the back there. Look, there you go. That's wedged our tank. I will just push that primer on the bottom of the carb. Perfect, the carb is full. So I think I 
I think we can now choke on. Let's see if she starts, guys. Here we go. Perfect. Ha ha! Ah, that is much, much better than a Mark 40 Villius. And remember what we read in the book. These were a factory fit in 1958. The actual Bonza manual tells us. They fit an electric start cooler in 1958. So we're actually being quite period here. And I love it. <sighs> Are we going to mess around doing anything else today? I think, how long's this video? Oh my word, it's nearly an hour. Well, you've had an hour of me faffing around. Sorry, this is an absolute shambles on here. I apologise, but the bench is just not really big enough for a sizable engine like this. So I can only apologise for that. Right, I'll, I'll get all this wire and disconnected. Oh, that battery connection was loose. That could be why we were having sparks, because my battery tightening clamp <clears throat> weren't that successful, was it? <laughs> Marbles. So there you are, guys. Thank you very, very much for watching. Are you upset? This is the Bonza engine. I mean, doesn't she sound lovely? Bear in mind, we're inside a building. We're in a shed. This engine is very quiet. A nice rhythmic dum 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 dum. These run so well, and they're so reliable. I think we've got to keep it. Starting motor's a bit noisy. I might have to pull the end cap back. Just a scotch. And squirt a bit of juice in there. Just a little. If not, the brush has come out. And then you're in a world of hurt. Well, there you go. Right, that's going to be it, guys. And we will see you next time. Ha-ha!